We're going to program ourselves for success. Okay, what do I mean by programming? This is, I'm, I'm, not, we're not, I'm not recruiting for a cult, okay? <laughs> I'm not recruiting for a cult or anything like that. We're already programming ourselves all the time because it's how we learn things. As soon as we do something and repeat it, our brain starts creating a repetitive habit for it, okay? We're just wired like that. That's how it happens. We're creatures of habit. And when we learn things really, really well, those behaviors become automatic, and we can do them more precisely, and we can do them more accurately. And in a moment, you're going to see why I'm stressing this. But let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay. Once you learn something, like walking, eating, driving, social cues, emotional responses, these are things that just happen. Okay, they just happen. You're not thinking about them. You are programmed. And let me show you so you actually experience this in a, in a real visceral way, okay? When I say go, what I want you to do is I want you to say the letters of the alphabet in a row, just all the way from A to Z, fairly rapidly, okay? Ready, go. A, B, C, D, all the way to Z, keep going. All the way to Z, all the way to Z. Okay, easy, right? Easy. Now, I'm gonna make it even easier for you. I'm gonna make it even easier for you. I'm gonna cut your workload in half. When I say go this time, what I want you to do is I want you to say every other letter of the alphabet, okay? Ready, go. Uh, okay, all right. Can you see how that's a little bit harder? Because the first one you have a pattern encoded for it. It's hardwired. It just, boom, it goes. The second one, you have to consciously think about it. And so it's slower, okay? And that, that is a direct example of, of what I'm talking about. Virtual practice, mental practice of something can yield almost the same result. Not let me say it this way. It can yield results that are just as beneficial as actual practice. There have been many studies that have actually proved this. They did one with basketball players, where they had these guys come in. One half of the team was went in and practiced free throws. The other half of the team just went and mentally practiced making perfect baskets. Their improvement was almost the same. Now, of course, there's going to be some differences because when you're really doing it, you're involving your muscles, you're involving some other parts of the brain, your motor movement. But on the other hand, when you're practicing in your imagination, you have the ability to speed things up, slow them down, try things a different way. You have a lot of flexibility. So just consider the possibility that practicing something can, in your mind, can actually help building, build those skills. Because that deep part of your brain that actually assembles those skills is receiving input from external input, meaning your sensory input from the external world, it is also receiving input from your internal input, the things you say to yourself, the things you picture happening. And at that level, it doesn't distinguish as much as you might think. Okay? And I think we all have, have had this experience. You know, people can talk themselves into a lot of different things, good and bad. Okay? Good and bad. We're going to focus on the good tonight. But remember, then when you do work in your imagination, you have a lot of flexibility. So I'm not suggesting that, I'm not suggesting you can just go in a room, sit in a chair, close your eyes, and, and suddenly you're going to be a concert pianist. No, you're gonna to have to go and actually practice. However, and I've experienced this myself with music, um, because I'm a professional musician as well, 
if you do the practice, uh, you can have some days when you don't practice where you just sit there and really, really imagine it, and you can advance just as much, even more, even more, because of this flexibility. So it's important to use them together. So, all right, now, with, now we have some background, now we kind of got some warm up. So now we're gonna get into the nitty gritty. I want you to think about something in your life that you would like to change. Now, again, make it something that you have control of, okay? In other words, something like this. I wish I felt like this when my boss talked to me, rather than I wish my boss would do this. We can't control other people. You can't control what other people do. So just pick something that you, you know, that you would like to change, okay? You don't have to tell me what it is, all right? You don't have to tell me, and, and you know, as we go along, you can even change it, but I think it's important to focus. Pick something that you'd like to change. Ask yourself these questions right now. Why is it important to me, not to my family, not to the, my employer, not to who, anybody else, okay? Why is it important to you? Because you're gonna need that emotional charge to make this work. It has to be something that you want. What are the benefits you're gonna get from making the change? And then ask yourself, why haven't you done it already? What's going on with that? Why haven't you done it already? Now you don't need to know the answer to that right now, but I wanna light those circuits up in your brain. 